And let's talk a little bit about the other things that are out there. Um, so the TCG does actually have a pretty active storage work group that looks at things like uh, hard drives. Um, these are just exactly what they sound like, hard drives with trusted computing in mind. Most of them are self-encryption. Um, these are actually designed for high-speed encryption and decryption. So if you're looking for um, hard drive <coughs> encryption, you don't want to do some of those hacks where you're using the TPM to protect a symmetric key that you're using to decrypt or encrypt the hard drive. These self-encrypting drives are great. Um, some of them support user authentication. Some of them, and the last time I heard from these storage manufacturers, this was still on the, in, on the horizon. They're looking at it. They weren't implemented yet, but that was a couple of years ago. They were looking at things like, this hard drive will appraise your machine. It will look at the PCR values from your TBM, perform an attestation, and decide based on that attestation whether or not to release the data. So now we're getting to that point where you can say, is the machine booting properly? I plug my drive in, and whether you get access or not depends on whether the machine's in a good state. But there's never a point where there's a software key that's available in the open that someone could copy. Um, so um, protocols, the, if you thought TNC was complicated, there are more. <laughs> um, but in general, the TCG has a lot of different protocols that they're working on. With ha which have the goal of using those low-level technologies like TPMs, like storage. Um, integrating the TPM quotes into the higher-level reporting standards. There's a whole bunch of work going on right now. Bringing TPMs into SCAP, if you're familiar with SCAP, um, or signing SCAP reports with the TPM. Um, and, and SCAP is not the only thing that they're looking at there. It's just the one that I have to be aware of. Um, Certifying TPM keys and trusted platforms in various formats of service certificates with various protocols. Adding TPMs to various data channel establishments, various handshakes. Um, when you, if you are look, if you are somebody who has decisions to make as to whether or not to use TPMs or use them in an enterprise context, please, 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 do not assume it came from the TCG. It must be trustworthy. It must use the TPM correctly. That is not true. The TCG is a not quite a volunteer organization, but basically corporations just you know pay a certain fee or they're consulting members so people can sign up and say, you know, my corporation wants to join the TCG. I hand them a few thousand dollars. Some set of employees join. They join certain committees, and the committees are basically run by whoever is enthusiastic enough to do the work. So the quality of the output depends very much on the expertise of the people involved. And a lot of the people doing the infrastructure, the, the communications protocols, the, the high level certi certification designs, they're, they're people with a lot of expertise in enterprise compatibility and in data formats. And many of those people do not have a corresponding expertise in the low level security architectures. And it sometimes shows. So, if you're going to look at these, evaluate the protocols you're using yourself based on your needs and your network. Um, so near future, we're going to start seeing things like the mobile trusted module. Um, as, as I mentioned in the break, for those of you who are here, um, Nokia actually has some prototypes of this out now. The first versions of the spec have just come out very recently. You can find them online at, on the TCG's website. And the idea here is TPM-like functionality for, head, for cell phones. So we can start doing identity. We can start doing data protection. This is going to be great for those mobile wallets. Um, and the cellular providers are really excited about the ability to control which software your phone is running. So whether you like this or not really depends on your perspective of your cellular provider. Um, TPM 2.0 is the next version of the TPM. It's going to be more capable than today's TPMs. We're looking at things like SHA-256 or elliptic curve cryptography rather than SHA-1 and RSA, although they will have a lot of backwards compatibility support. They will potentially have more storage space. That storage space can be allocated more flexibly. We can start looking at, at you know, platform configuration registers, which have permissions based on an authentication value rather than on a particular locality. So that I can start saying, this particular register is only available to someone who knows XYZ password. So there's more fine-grained access control. 
and the corresponding complexity of reporting the fine grained access control, but it can be reported. So there's a lot of, of new features there, and they are trying to make it more standards compliant. TPM 1.2 um, is not actually FIPS compliant. It tried very hard, and it didn't quite make it. Um, 2.0, they are looking at maybe not meeting the top level of FIPS standards, but they are meeting the, the lower tier tiers. Um, there's also the concept of a trusted virtualized platform. Um, there's a, the virtualization working group is extremely active, and this has a couple of different purposes, one of which is using TPMs as a, a groundwork to establish trust in a virtualized workstation or in a cloud provider that whole trusted multi-tenant infrastructure. So that if I say, I'm hosting a VM in your cloud, I have some assurance that that's actually a safe thing to do. And also we're looking at virtual TVMs where we can use a, where a virtual machine will have its own TPM attached that is not shared with other virtual machines, that is not shared with the hardware, which will let us both identify virtual machines in a meaningful fashion. So I know when I'm connecting, is this my virtual machine? Um, and also to protect data within a virtual machine. So all of those features about machine authentication and attestation that we talk about for hardware TBMs, we're looking at moving into the virtual world. Again, the cloud, this sort of thing is going to be really powerful if we can get it working. So that's what we're looking at now. Uh, Zeno, quick question. Yes. So in 2.0, are they doing any sort of requirements in terms of um, making the things faster, or are they putting any sort of requirements in for uh, BIOS manufacturers? I mean, so I know there's that NIST document saying, you know, pretty please give us the gold values for your uh, initial root of trust, <laughs> but is that the kind of thing which would make sense to actually put into the TPM 2.0 spec? That's not going to be in the TPM 2.0 spec. Um, if that is anywhere, it will be in the PC client spec. So the, the way that the TCG specs work is that the TPM spec is for this generic concept of a TPM. In terms of actual, what we think of TPMs, little physical devices, which of those features are implemented and what the various, you know, what does the contents of PCR0 mean? What do the contents of PCR1 mean? Those are defined in something called the PC client specification. So if I want to know how my TPM is working, I need to both look at the TPM spec for what the TPMs do, and then look at the client spec for what does my TPM do. They did this because you know, mobile TPMs, they thought might be part of the same TPM spec originally, so a mobile TPM would have a, a different set of requirements. The PC client spec also covers related technology, so I would expect if there are any BIOS requirements, that would go in the PC client spec, and frankly, performance requirements are mostly also going to go there. The, the, the PC client spec is really the thing that says, okay, we've taken the spec away from the people who are the theoretical security designers. Now we're going to have the big practical fight over the TPM vendors who want it to be low cost, and the platform vendors who want it to be low cost, and the application vendors who want features. And I don't have any visibility into that fight, so I have no idea where that's going to end up in terms of requirements. Okay, that was going to be my second question, is whether right. we had any visibility into the PC client spec generation. Um, I do not personally. If you want to talk offline about what, um, how we may be able to get that, um, it's something that we probably could acquire, we just don't have right now.